What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be the spoiler free review for Insidious The Red Door aka Insidious 5. This is directed by Patrick Wilson in his directorial debut who also returns to star alongside the rest of his Lambert family. Ty Simpkins, uh, Roy's, or Rose Byrne, uh, Lynn Shea who isn't part of the family but she's part of that original iconic unit we love so much from the first two films and of course we have some other familiar faces that i won't want don't want to get into let that be a surprise again because this is spoiler free now this film is set nine years or ten years or so after the original first two entries of the insidious franchise to put their demons to rest once and for all josh lambert and college age dalton lambert must go deeper into the further than, than ever before facing their family's dark past and a host of new and more horrifying terrors that lurk behind the red door now this screenplay is from scott teams who has had a hand in the decline that i would say started the minute he got involved with the halloween trilogy recently that we got from blumhouse in cities the red door is easily my favorite since in cities 2 but this is not a very good movie specifically from a writing perspective revisiting the lamberts was enjoyable and i have no problem admitting that i did find this serviceable at best patrick wilson's direction is solid enough it's a more than effective enough i would say directorial debut my favorite sequence is one is this one take shot of Josh in the car while an object is approaching him. I won't give more context on that, but you'll understand it once you see the movie. Scott team's screenplay is the problem. This is mostly a story about a father and son repairing their fractured relationship that seems to have sparked once Renee and Josh got divorced sometime between the events of Insidious and Insidious 2. The issue is, with that, Josh and Dalton are completely separated for the majority of this film. It's mostly a slow progression to them remembering what happened 10 years ago with a couple of scares and hit or miss humor in between it all. So it's hard for me to truly invest in that fractured bond when they're both off doing their own thing for a majority of the movie only to culminate into this lackluster finale uh again hell it's basically a screen cap mostly of insidious one and two for most of its runtime because our characters don't remember anything for way too long compared to that original film it's too long because the writing decisions make it that way dalton is experiencing all of this terror on campus but ignores his mother's calls <laughs> Josh is experiencing terror at his home, but doesn't reach out to Renee until it's almost time for the credits to roll. Certain scares are also more effective than others, specifically those involving a sheet and a puking ghost on the college campus. Honestly, the jump scares weren't as obnoxious as other horror projects. It's not that this was a complete misfire either, but more of a movie that never reaches its full potential that I want to say it was showing very early on. The highlight of Dalton's college experience is our new character, Chris who you could say is filling in for Specs and Tucker in the comedic relief department. Comedy that pretty much overstates his welcome too, unfortunately, rather than building tension and maintaining an eeriness throughout like the first two. Chris is very likable as a character and has final girl potential, I would say. And the friendship that blossoms between her and Dalton is fun to witness. Still, she's showcased way more than the other Lamberts, who have some highly interesting developments between these last 10 years, but those are left on the floor and just barely played with during the Red Door's third act. Nick the Dick is one of the most awful names I've ever heard, but at least this character isn't getting a lot of screen time. Teams' screenplay has some themes regarding embracing your past, since our past, of course, makes us who we are, rather than forgetting like we've seen them do in the last two movies which I did thought I did think was explored well enough, but still also felt undercooked. We're also digging even further into the source of our astral projection, very much so getting into some hereditary territory here. The nature of this, the problem here, I would say with this is it's lessening that mysterious nature of what was presented in the first two movies with that astral projection ability. You know, I kind of figured that the astral projection came from what the red door told us, but then it peels it back in such a way by filling in these gaps regarding mental illness and buried family trauma that just felt a little unnecessary it felt like it was a little bit too much less is more less is more guys I've, I've said that so many times on so many of my other videos less is more the cinematography i could argue is decent can't really say it was poor by any means but this script is just what is creating this to be such a mixed bag it i definitely did dig that claustrophobic feel during the mri sequence 
And that may have been the film's second scariest moment for me personally. I don't know why. Uh, I just, it was a very tight shot and I thought it was very effective. <laughs> Patrick and Ty Simpkins are the ones keeping this afloat thanks to their compelling performances. Rose does fine for the screen time that she has. Uh, the, the, the actor who plays Foster, can't think of his name, I thought he was fine. Uh, Lynn Shay firing on all cylinders, even gave us an iconic monologue once again related to the further like she always has in the first two movies. Now, I would say that the pacing seems to be the biggest issue. This film seems to enjoy kind of teasing you with the terror and the tension it's about to build. And then it just blows its load very early with its sequence and then gets back to messing around with characters hanging around on the college campus or hanging around trying to recap once again what happened in the first or second movie. And it's like, bro, we already know that. Stop. It's prolonging something to a point that when it finally happens when you hit your climax and the <laughs> trying to get, not not going to get too sexual here but when you hit your climax everything is so fast after that there's like okay that's all that's all you got to be kidding me that that can't be all it's, it's undercooked it's undercooked because of the way it's paced i would say it's not paced very well the score is fine. I think the score definitely adds a lot of tension during the sequences that are terrifying, but those terrifying sequences, they're not allowed to breathe as much as the comedy is allowed to breathe. The film is leaning more on this melodrama and comedy. When the scares happen, the scares are effective again sometimes, but then it's like, oh, forget those scares. I'm gonna have to give this a six out of 10. I kinda also am leaning on a five and a half out of 10. I'm not going to say I hate it Insidious the Red Door, but it's undercooked. It definitely is an undercooked conclusion to the Lamberts. Now, jumping into Scream 7, because I do have a Scream 7 update, KDM Monsters, who uh, is a reliable insider who has proven themselves to be reliable in the past, seems to have a bit of a following. I've talked about them before in the past. Put out a tweet saying that Scream 7 should be filming in early 2024. Now, I don't know what that necessarily means as far as the time frame i would i would guess around february march maybe april that's just me uh and also of course with the looming sga strike who knows how that could impact what they're saying they're saying that scream 7 should be filming in early 2024 but we'll have to just wait and see i'll share my thoughts on this a little bit more in a separate video let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video